Alrighty guys, what is going on? I'm Tubby Emu. This is my very last pay-per-view prediction results video from my office. It's been a great six months, but I'm moving uh, tomorrow and I'll be in on Tuesday in my new office in my new apartment. Um, let's get right to it. I watched SummerSlam with three friends. We drove down uh, to the movie theater in Chippewa Falls, uh, went to Mike Constant, and we paid 15 bucks. And some people are like, that's crazy, Tubby. Uh, you got all food, drink, and shit. And I didn't even know that was included. Let's talk about the pay-per-view. Now, there were no surprise matches being thrown in. There was no Ryback, no Brodus Clay, no Sin Cara. They were business. And I was very surprised. I was expecting surprise matches, but I liked the fact that they went straight up, and that's all they did. Let's get into it. Now, uh, we didn't get to see the pre-show. They weren't showing the pre-show. And right as I turned on my phone uh, to watch the live stream on my iPhone as we were in line waiting to get food, uh, we see Antonio Cesaro beat Santino Morello with his finisher. Uh, he went for the Cobra, and uh, he, he was locked on Oksana, and it kept turning around, turning around. Finally, Antonio Cesaro won. Um, I like Antonio Cesaro as a wrestler. I don't like the talking thing uh, where he does different languages. Some people do, some people don't. Uh, I do think he'll have a great career in the WWE. Um, as far as wrestling goes, he is a very interesting wrestler to watch. Then came time for the actual pay-per-view, watching it on the huge big screen. First time I've done it, and uh, the opening match was Chris Jericho versus Dolph Ziggler. Um, it's quite a different atmosphere when you're used to watching it by yourself or with family, uh, when you have 200 people or 180 people in the auditorium, and they're going crazy and they hate Dolph Ziggler. Uh, overall, the match was great. They put on a lot of spots. Um, Jericho had the walls of Jericho on. Reversed it like usual. Uh, there was a code breaker. Um, there was a zigzag. Um, awesome, awesome match. Uh, Vicky was going absolutely crazy. She had a skin tight outfit, and and oh my god, you guys have to watch it if you can find it or buy the replay or whatever. She starts screaming, and everybody in the auditorium just absolutely one hundred percent started laughing because she's sitting there just bawling and bitching out. Uh, but in the end. Chris Jericho went for a lion tamer, um, had the walls Jericho in. Now, he didn't have it on the back of his neck, which I thought that's how he did it. Uh, he didn't in this one, but Dolph Ziggler did, in fact, tap, and Dolph Ziggler's already demanding a rematch, which could see the briefcase get put on the line. Who knows? Um, up next, we had Daniel Bryan versus Kane. If these aren't in the direct order, I can't exactly remember. Daniel Bryan taking on Kane. Uh, the WWE is doing something great with his reverse psychology with a no chance, getting the yes chance to go crazy. Um, the match itself I thought was great. Um, some people didn't like it. Um, they went back and forth. You know, Daniel Bryan kicked out of a choke slam. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed the match. Some people, in the, A lot of people in the crowd were pissed off. Uh, in the end, though, Daniel Bryan was able to roll up Kane for a small package win, and Kane was absolutely pissed. Kane goes backstage, just irate, beating the shit out of everything, throwing everything down. Where is he? Where is he? And uh, <laughs> J um, Justin Rob, not Justin Roberts, Josh Matthews goes up to interview him, and Kane picks him and just throws him. I'm guessing it was on a mat, but they did like sound effects, like he threw him into poles and stuff. And AJ said that there would be consequences for his actions for putting his hands on a WWE announcer. Um, <laughs> I thought it was pretty funny. It was a great thing for Daniel Bryan because it doesn't make Kane look super weak. It makes Daniel Bryan um, not get buried. I thought it was a perfect way to go for that match. Uh, up next was Batman versus The Miz. I mean, Rey Mysterio. Um, <laughs> I thought I was going to the movie theater to watch SummerSlam, as PJ Singh said. Uh, instead, I'm seeing The Dark Knight Rises. He did come out in a Batman costume. Um... I couldn't take him really seriously. That match was pretty good. I enjoyed seeing those guys go back and forth. Um, very entertaining. I liked it. Some people didn't in the crowd, uh, especially because Rey Mysterio didn't win. All the little kids, you could just hear them go crazy. And the adults or some of the guys were like, awesome. And I really enjoyed it. In the end, though, uh, Rey Mysterio hit a 619. Um, went up top for the splash. Miz rolled out of the way. Uh, and Miz was able to hit a skull-crushing finale for the win to retain his title. Great way to put over Miz right now. He's the only heel champion. 
unless CM Punk slowly starts to turn heel. Um, then we had, who all was next? Was it? I'm pretty sure it was Sheamus taking on Alberto Del Rio. It might have been the tag team match, but Sheamus Del Rio, I was very skeptical about this match. I hate seeing this. Um, and it honestly seems after what happened tonight, we're going to get to see it again. Um, the only thing I can tell you, Dolph Ziggler did not cash in his money in the bank. And for obvious reasons, here we go. They're going back and forth, uh, middle of the match, near the kind of the start. Uh, Sheamus was picking up Alberto Del Rio and was going to do a move on him. And Del Rio was lifting up the turnbuckle and exposed it. The ref didn't see it. And yeah, everybody in the thing's like, oh, it's going to come into play later. Uh, and it absolutely did. Uh, later in the match, uh, it was kind of funny. Del Rio imitated Sheamus for the bro kick and missed it. And I thought that was absolutely hilarious. Um, in the end, though, picks him up. He hits his head on it. Del Rio hits a move. Um, but Sheamus is able to to counter it. Uh, Sheamus hits his move, hits the Irish Curse backbreaker, goes for the pin, and he, and he kind of pulled him in a way where you could see it. He does the Irish Curse backbreaker uh, right near the ropes. Uh, the referee didn't see it, Mike Chioda. Uh, here we go, one, two, Del Rio's foot's on the rope, three. Uh, oh, I'm totally missing the point of this. How did I forget this? Ricardo Rodriguez. Alberto Del Rio pulls him in the ring. Absolutely hilarious. Starts beating the crap out of him. The fact that he kicked out from like an Enziguri or something. I think it was an Enziguri. And uh, he's basically telling uh, Ricardo Rodriguez, throw me your shoe. Because on SmackDown, that's what he did for the win. And uh, so the referee, Mike Chiodo, is pulling him away. He's got the shoe in his hand. Throws it. It goes over Del Rio's head. He barely misses it. Sheamus grabs it. Hits him in the head. That's when he does the Irish Curse backbreaker. Mike Chioda does not see the foot on the rope. One, two, three. And Sheamus, like a sneaky, I thought it was absolutely hilarious. Uh, right as the referee was coming up, he kind of like throws the, the leg off. And uh, he does it in a smirky way. And kind of like just mocked Alberto Del Rio. And Alberto Del Rio went crazy in the ring. I was thinking Wade Barrett or somebody was going to come out. Uh, but it didn't. So it, it looks like we're getting Alberto Del Rio versus Sheamus again. Um... I think we're going to get it again at Night of Champions, unfortunately. Uh, then came time for the prime time players. Um, when their music dropped, I got all excited. Millions of dollars, millions of dollars. And I went with a couple guys that really don't pay attention very much. I watched uh, WrestleMania with one of them at their house. Um, and when Titus O'Neil went, ooh, 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 <laughs> everybody just lost it and started laughing. Um the primetime players without Abraham Washington, can they succeed? I hope they can. Uh, but in the end, Black John Cena and <laughs> Titus O'Neil were not able to pick up the victory. It looked like they were going to. Uh, Kofi went up top, sky high on uh, Titus O'Neil, knocks him out, cross body. Uh, Darren Young was going for his move. However, R-Truth reversed it, hits his finisher. R-Truth retains. And little Jimmy wasn't out there, which is kind of odd. Um, didn't he get hurt from his two-on-one attack last week? Um, so the only title that's going to change hands potentially right now is the United States Championship. Then came time for the WWE Championship match. Now, a lot of people are complaining that this was a shitty triple threat match. I actually thought it went pretty good. You saw Big Show get his normal dominance or beat the crap out of both of them. You saw them try to tag team him, uh... A lot of people were mad on Facebook and Twitter that there was only one finisher was ever hit. You had um, John Cena, he had an AA. Um, CM Punk was doing this new this new finisher. I don't know what the, what it's called in the MMA world or whatever. Um, but the way it ended the first fall, uh, CM Punk had him in the maneuver where you lift your leg up, you're pulling down the choke. It's kind of like the opposite of the Hell's Gates. And then John Cena came in and put the STFU on, and Big Show taps, and the referee couldn't decide who won. And he's like, go back and forth. AJ's music hits. Absolutely perfect. Let's light it up. She comes skipping down to the ring, and uh, we're all sitting there like, turn around. Big Show's going to knock you out. She's going to restart the match. Restart the match. They turn around, restarts the match. Big Show, double choke slam. Big Show goes for the pin. One, two, kicks out. Goes for CM Punk. One, two, kicks out. Uh, in the end, though, John Cena picks up the Big Show. He ducks a, a WMD. 
hits an attitude adjustment. CM Punk takes John Cena, throws him outside the ring for the one, two, three. CM Punk retains the WWE Championship. I thought it was a pretty good match. Um, and you looked at John Cena, how pissed he was. It basically, you know, eliminated Big Show from this feud. I, I'm not against seeing CM Punk versus John Cena. I know a lot of people are. Uh, for right now, I'm okay with it. Um, it gives you know CM Punk's title reign another month to go longer, but it gets Big Show out of the field, hopefully. Um, main event time. Brock Lesnar comes out. Triple H comes out. And during the pre-show, he told the, the referee, Scott Armstrong, I do not want you to call this no matter what. This match will end in a pinfall or submission. Do not count out. Do not do anything. There will be a finish. This came back to bite Triple H uh, in the butt a couple times. Numerous times throughout the match, Brock Lesnar had the Kimura lock on, uh, either standing up and there was no rope breaks or anything. Uh, he kept going back to the arm, kept going back to the arm. Um, Brock Lesnar was dominating. Not as bad as Brock Lesnar dominated John Cena. It was a pretty even battle as far as the way it was going. Uh, outside the ring... Um, they threw each other out a couple times. You know, Brock was getting beat down. A lot of punches. I really enjoyed the match. Um, each guy hit a finisher that he kicked out of. Um, Triple H actually hit two pedigrees. Um, and what kind of seemed like it was really it was real was outside the ring, uh, Triple H got thrown over the table, and Brock Lesnar tipped the Spanish announce table. Didn't break. He tipped it like it was like actually built solid for once. It wasn't meant to collapse. Jumps down on Triple H. Um, they're going at it, and Triple H throws Brock Lesnar into the announce table, the corner of Jerry Lawler, and Michael Coles, and the really sharp corner, like the really hard edge. And Brock Lesnar looks like he runs into it, where his kidneys had problems from a surgery and why he left MMA, uh, and he starts like gagging. Uh, and, like, he spits out his mouthpiece and, like, looks like he was going to puke and, like, there were serious problems. So throughout the rest of the match, Triple H was capitalizing on that going on, going on. Um, Brock Lesnar actually took off his arm gloves um, near the start of the match. He was like, okay, we're going to do a fist fight and we're going to go at it. And uh, I think you could tell how sponsored he really is because his mouth guard is sponsored by Jimmy Johns. And near the match, he does a move, then he smiles for the first time. And Jimmy Johns, full right across there, everybody in the arena started laughing. Jimmy Johns. Um, but in the end, Triple H hit a pedigree. Brock Lesnar hit an F5. Triple H again hits a pedigree, goes for the pin, is trying to flip him over to go for the pin. And Brock Lesnar locks in a Kimura. Holds it in, holds it in. Triple H is trying to fight out of it, trying to fight out of it. Was trying to hit the kidneys. But no, snaps are in, and Triple H has to tap out. Um, I thought this would happen, guys. Don't get mad. Brock Lesnar, if they're paying him $5 million, needs to look strong, needs to get a victory. Absolutely deserve to win this match. And it seemed like it was Triple H's retirement. Um, it reminded me of Rock versus Stone Cold Steve Austin, where... You know, you knew it was going to be Stone Cold's last night. Rock left the ring uh, to Stone Cold Steve Austin. Brock Lesnar left the ring to Triple H. Um, and Triple H, you could tell it was most likely his last in-ring match. He might come back, I don't know, at WrestleMania or something like that. Um, and the crowd looks like he was giving him respect. And then they start chanting in his farewell moment as he was saying, sorry, I couldn't do it. Uh, you tapped out. Absolutely dick move crowd. Um, I mean, a crowd's going to do what a crowd was going to do. I just thought, you know, Triple H deserved better uh, than that. And then right after they did it, they were hypocrites, and everybody in the theater was like, well, seriously? And they started clapping and cheering for him. Uh, when he went to the top of the ramp, he said goodbye. Um, so is this his last in-ring match? This could be huge. I wonder what you guys think. What did you think of SummerSlam? Full results, full highlights. Sorry I gave you kind of shitty results and highlights. No surprise matches. Uh, the only title that changed hands tonight was the United States Championship. Other than that, pretty solid card. I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10 because it was on the big screen. I enjoyed the pay-per-view. Uh, I think it was worth the 15 bucks that I paid. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure to smash that like button for SummerSlam. You guys have a wonderful day. Tubby Moo out.